we're going to finish up this section. Yesterday we talked about trapezoids and we kind of ran out of time, so today we're going to talk about a thing called kites. And it looks pretty much like what you think it's going to look like. There's a kite right there. How about that? Let's talk about what is um, true about a kite. Let's label it so we can... Oops, A, B, D. How about C? Oops, what am I doing? There we go. A, B, C, D. And we'll call this one right there E. All right, here's what a kite is. A kite looks like this. Let me show you a couple things that's true about a kite. Uh, a kite has, by definition, a kite has exactly two pair of consecutive um, equal sides. What does that mean? It means the sides that are next to each other. Well, look at it. This side and this side are next to each other, but do they look like they're equal to each other? Not at all, okay? But look at this one. Look at A, B, and A, D. They're next to each other, and they will be equal to each other, all right? I said there's exactly two pair of equal sides, consecutive equal sides. These two are equal to each other, and the other two that are next to each other, B, C, and um, C, D, they're equal to each other as well. So on a kite, you have exactly two pair of sides that are next to each other actually congruent to each other. Everybody see that? So these two are equal to each other, and if these two are equal to each other, then I have a kite. Everybody see that? So they're consecutive sides, which means they're next to each other. Consecutive means one next to the other one. All right, You have exactly two pair of consecutive um, equal sides. So these two are next to each other. They're equal to each other. These two are next to each other. They're equal to each other. Then I have a kite. That's by definition. Now we also drew some of these. What's that B, D, and A, C? What do we call that? We did that with parallelograms. We did it with rectangles and squares and trapezoids even. What do we call those things, A, C, and B, D? We call them diagonals, right? We call them diagonals. When you go from one corner to a non-consecutive vertice or vertex, it's a diagonal. See that? It goes right through the heart of it right there. What does it look like to you that happens with these two um, diagonals? Something we've talked about in another figure. What about this one? Do they look like they bisect each other? This one looks like it might be bisected, but this long one right here, A, E, and E, C, they sure don't look equal, do they? But look what they form. They form an angle. Something that we've talked about in another type of figure. So it should be relatively familiar to you. Nobody but Summer sees this. Come on, you got to see this. Look at the two diagonals. Look how they hit each other. Look how they hit each other. Yes, they're perpendicular to each other. <laughs> Come on, it's stuff that we've talked about before. It's not like it's brand new, you know. You guys got to see that, don't you? Are you are you really trying? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you're really trying with what I asked you right there. Look at these two diagonals. Okay, how do they hit each other? Okay. <laughs> They're perpendicular. They hit each other at a right angle. It's perpendicular. So that's always going to be true about the diagonals of a kite. The diagonals of a kite will always be perpendicular to each other. So that will always be a right angle. Of course, these other three right here would be right angles as well. All right? Everybody got that? So that's two things we know about a kite you probably didn't know before. These two are equal. These two are equal. And they form the diagonals form a right angle. Well, here's something else that's true. Look at angle um, A. I'm sorry, uh, let's look at A and C. Look at angle A and look at angle C. Do they look like they're equal to each other? Angle A and angle C. Not really. Angle C looks what compared to angle A? Looks a lot bigger, doesn't it? Or a little bit bigger anyway. So those two are not equal to each other. But look at this big angle B up here and this big angle D down here. Yeah, they do look equal to each other, and they are equal to each other. Now, how do you know which ones are equal? Just by looking at it? No. Look, what's it been, look what it's in between. Look at this angle right here. It's between these two unequal sides. Do you see it? So this side and this side are not equal to each other, but the angle between them is equal to the angle between the two unequal sides over here. Everybody with me on that? You may want to jot that down. I'm just showing you by picture right now, just to go a little quick. But the angle between the two non-equal sides, they are equal to each other. So a kite has exactly one pair of opposite 
uh, congruent angles, exactly one pair. That means the other one is not going to be equal. So A and C, angle A and C, are definitely not equal to each other. Everybody see that? Look at A. A is between the two equal sides. C is between the two equal sides. It's those two angles which are not equal to each other at all. Does that make sense? So which, one, which angles are equal? It's the angles between what? The two unequal sides. Got it? See, that's got one tick mark. This has got two. This is the angle between. So this angle and this angle are the ones that are actually equal to each other. Make sense? All right. Um, that pretty much is... Um, oh, I know what. Uh, Lana, you said something. You said they bisect each other. Well, they don't actually bisect each other, but guess what? The one between the two equal angles, do you see that? That's actually being bisected. So this one across the middle right here is actually bisecting the shorter one right here. All right, so BE, we'll put three tick marks, is actually equal to ED. So E is actually the midpoint of BD. All right, so that's another thing that we know that's true about a kite. Everybody see that? Now, AE and EC, do they look like they're equal to each other? Not at all, and they're not, okay? So how do you know which one's equal? The one between the two equal angles, right? That connects the two equal angles. You got it? So those are going to be equal to each other. All right, let's do a little example, and we'll be finished with kites. That wasn't so hard, was it? No, I don't think so. Um, let's just flip this. I'm just making this look like... Um, uh, let's do this Rotate it 90 degrees, and it's not 180 degrees. There we go. All right, so let's just, uh, I just wanted it to look like the example in the book. So watch this. This is really simple. If that's 8 and that's 8, um, oh, okay. This is something that we mentioned yesterday, so it might be fresh in your mind, and that's 6. Find Z, Y. Yeah. Here's what they tell you. Right? This is X and W. So look at this. This is the information they give you. All right? So this side is equal to this side, so that makes sense, right? Um, oh, by the way, they tell you that this is 24. There we go. All right? And they ask you to find Z, Y. They say find Z, Y, the, the uh, measurement of Z, Y. We'll just call it a just to use one letter is that alright so I want to find a right here or actually I'll tell you what make it a little easier for you let's call it C do you know why I called it C what do you think it's the hypotenuse exactly right so that's why I called it C so let's take a look so how in the world would I find C well, it would be equal this side right here, but the problem is I don't know this side right here, do I? All right, but I do know these two sides. I know this is 24. I know this is 8. And what else do I know about the diagonals? What did I just say? They do what? It's a right angle, isn't it? So I've got a right triangle. I've got two sides of a right triangle. We mentioned this yesterday. We did a problem like this yesterday, something like it. How can you find that third side? A couple of you have already said it. What do we use? It starts with a P. Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, okay? And what is that? That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The a and b are the two legs of the right triangle. Yeah, that's what I just, I've said it twice already that we did this yesterday. So this is 8 squared plus 24 squared equals what? And that's why I called it c just so it would match up, okay? I could have called it anything, but equals c squared. So let's do this. So it's, uh, let's turn this on, there we go. So it's 8 squared, right, which is 64, plus 24 squared, and I have no idea what that is. So we just put 24 squared equals 640. So this is 640 equals C squared. But how do I solve for C? Find the square root, okay, find the square root. And then we just punch that in, so it's the square root of, um, we could do this, actually of our answer on this calculator and that is about 25.3 alright and so we can just say C is about 25.3 does it make sense that it's 25.3 yeah it does because this hypotenuse has to be the longest side doesn't it 
if it came out shorter than 24, you knew you did something wrong because the hypotenuse has to be bigger than any of the other two sides, right? Yes. Yeah, we did. We said it right here. This angle is equal to this angle, right? Like which one? Let me see it. Oh, that's a trapezoid, then. Were you ta oh, talking about three? All right, well, what about this? Let's just make up our own. Watch this. Good. Okay, look at that. Let's just make up some numbers. All right, let's use, uh, I'll tell you what, let's use the numbers I have right here. Let's say that this is, now this is not going to be to scale, but I don't care. We just need some numbers to use, and this is 128. This is actually a problem in the book. Okay, it's a uh, it's a, an example in the book, and they ask you to solve for this angle and this angle right here. Everybody watching? Okay. So it says that it probably says that this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, right? What's true about these two angles right here then? They have to be equal to each other. Do you agree? Because as we just finished talking about, the angle between the two non-equal sides are actually equal to each other, right? So they, they equal. Well, listen, what do all four of these angles add up to be? 360, right? So I take 360 minus what? Minus 72 minus 128, right? So I take those two away from 360. Is it 200 even? Okay, so 360 minus what 72 minus 128 and that's 160 all right now does that mean this angle right here is 160 degrees uh oh what am i doing right so what did i say that's 160 right so these two actually add up to be 160 degrees and they're both equal to each other right so what do i do with them divided by two right divided by two and i got 80 degrees so this is 80 degrees and this is 80 degrees does that make sense all right, so you had to use that 360 thing, right? And you know if you have a quadrilateral, all the angles add up to 360. You didn't even have to do the math, did you? You could have if you wanted to, right? N minus 2 times 180, right? Had that on the quiz we just took, right? And there it is. Does that help a little bit? Would we ever have to find both the... Like these two? Yeah. Um, you wouldn't be able to. If they, if they just told you this, you wouldn't be able to find. Now, they could have told you like one of these and one of these. Yeah. And you could figure it out this one because if they told you this one, you know that would be the same. So if they tell you three of them, sure, you could find the other one by just taking away from 360. Um, they could do that. I'm not sure if they do or not. All right. But if they just give you the one, you couldn't find them both. Right. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, they could do stuff like that. They could make this an X. You know, they just like we've always done, they could say this is 3X plus 2, or like up here. This is 3X plus 2. This is 5X minus 1. And what do you do? You set them equal to each other, solve for x, plug them back in, that kind of stuff, right? So it's the same kind of thing, just different pictures, right? And that's really all geometry is, doing the same thing over and over again. So your homework is just to finish up that worksheet that I gave you yesterday. And we'll go over all the answers tomorrow. We'll hit the trapezoid and the kite stuff uh, answers tomorrow, okay? Uh, bring your book Thursday and Friday. Everybody hear me? Bring your book on Thursday and Friday because I'm giving you stuff to do in class out of your book. So bring your book. It's already over because time flies when you're having fun. That's why.